This ice-sculpted Loch and Knocken space is still the most beautiful corner of the land. The air prevaricates on, the ups still lift, the hollows still astound with sphagnumart and puddlecraft. The tide glides out and slides back in again. Tourists, though he wouldn't use the word, not seeing himself as one, continue to come, maybe even wearier now of our much newer civilization. The clock's tyranny out there is strong as ever. Here, natural rhythms perpetuate, day and night, moon and season. His questions pointed at true north, a compass bearing that has driven men in boats and folk inland on a journey he'd be proud of. Who owns this land? Lochro, Clachtol, the pools in store, the fanks, Clashnessy Bay, our litany of mountains, Colbeg, Colmore, Sylvan, Canisp. They're ours, the local peoples, crofters, women even, all who live here, who fought and won, raised the funds to share the rights to this rock bog woodloch land. We possess, and it belongs to us. But what he knew was that we owned it all already. And though we have the title now, its text does not express the two-way deal. It is also us who belong to it. It remains masterless. Sullivan snow-clad, sun-drenched, an iced pudding in a bowl of cream as delicious as it's always been and always will be. Nothing we do changes the mountains, though I swear they gleamed the day we bought them. He asked if owning has anything to do with love. I answer him, everything and nothing. It's a marriage made in a solicitor's office. The deeds are silent about what matters. Yet it was passion for this place that drove the people to rewrite its history, to wrest the land from rich and absent men. The mountains are unaffected. Lochans do not care. The seas as merciless as always, still practising arpeggios on the beaches, ready for wild jazz, jabbling in the minch, ragged as ever, robbed of its fish, pulsing in and out of a harbour he wouldn't recognise. No boats tied up unloading catchers from whisky-drinking fishermen. The bar landlocked. Fish market, an empty hangar. A tanker full of cage-grown salmon, and a row of French and Spanish freezer lorries vacuuming up the guts of deep-sea ships. In Lochimba, the ancient smell of brine, seaweed and fish is laced, for the time being at least, with diesel. Outside, it's the old Atlantic perfume, great westerly gusts of it, soft and wet and welcome as a grandmother's tea. They say trouble's brewing in the ocean, the great web of feeders and fed collapsing, for now, though, dolphins line dance northwards past Slate and Sawyer, and beneath them sand eels shoal to a deep sea trance beat. The untiring tide has worked its shifts. At the end of the winter, the thaw is slow. Toads keep to their secret places. Great tits teach in treetops. Woodcock blunder among birches, dodging bullets. We argue, of course, this is still assent. Less poaching than his, in his day, maybe, but no fewer devastating views. He watched folk waning, eking a subsistence from acid soils, which he called dying acres, seeing abandoned lambing fields, larochs, rushes, heathered lazy beds untilled. But was it death he saw, or people tiring of the struggle to yoke the land to their control? How do we tell if a land dies or thrives? Whose assessment of life or death do we believe? The march crofter who sets a match to heather and lets the muir burn? Or the children counting dragonflies by Loch Bianach on a summer afternoon? Who loves this land the best? The hunter coming in with a stag on the back of his quad? Or the woman heaving a basket of sea rat to her berry patch in the Rowan wood? Another non-question. Like ownership, our love is shared and various, and as unlikely to run dry as the rosary of lochs, Urigal, Cam, Veity, Fuin, fingered by streams, 
their destiny the gushing fervour of the Kirkade. Yet it, too, swells and wanes to the pulse of seasons. Spring comes, polytunnels flourish, rowan and berries will feed the fieldfare's skirmish. Woods regenerate where teeth and hooves desist. Seals feed in the fjord, otters glide out on the rising water, ravens tumble and gannets plunge and lift and ride the sky. The land lives, despite what we do, or fail to do. Schemes start abort, traditions grow and cease. The land lives on. A tide of people ebbed and turned. New generations replenish the land, coming into our own, coming in, coming in to renew the unrequitable 